I think the interest is out there to have a look at my garden and go from one end of it to the other. Because I've got lots of experiments up here. Lots of ones I haven't told you about on the other videos. It's been three years since I started my garden here up on the hill, far away from any town and even further from the city. And none of you have really seen what my garden looks like, like in total, in detail. So I've decided to do a little series where I'm going to show you my whole garden from the bottom corner to the very top. I'm going to show you my food forest. Look. Mm. I'm going to show you my worm farm, show you how healthy my worms are and how I look after them. And I'll show you my soil factory and how I make the most delicious soil. It smells like a fresh forest in the morning. Did you know that soil actually affects the, the neurosensors in your brain and it can give you a, like a boost of serotonin? So if you want to have a good day and start the day in a good mood, have a smell of some fresh soil. Oh yeah. And I'll also show you my beers and, uh, and I'll show you how I split the hive, which I did recently. And I'll show you my vegetable garden and how that's powering. Look at all these dragon fruit flowers coming on. I'm going to have dragon fruit coming out my ears soon. And maybe if I work up the courage. Huh, I'll even taste this one of these Carolina Reapers later on in the series. But I have to think about that. And we're going to end up all the way up the top of the garden here. This is the last part of the garden, exact opposite end of the banana tree down the end there where I've got my pumpkins hanging. I've got to be careful not to hit my head because there's pumpkins hanging everywhere. See? There's a specific reason why I'm doing it like this, which is very, very interesting. And I'll show you that on this season as well. So without further ado, I reckon we should get down and start right down the bottom with our little banana tree experiment. When I started this garden, I didn't know anything about gardening, except that the plants somehow got their energy from the sun, and that cow poo was good for the soil. That's some of the things that my mother taught me. She was always making compost, but I never really took much notice. The cicadas are full on here in Australia. It's really hard to make videos, so I've got to take my microphone and, and have it really close to me down here, all right? So welcome back to the Weedy Garden. And this special series I'm going to do today is basically just a walkabout around the garden. I want to show you how my garden has developed over the last three years and how a garden can look if you start a garden with not knowing anything about gardening. So what is this? Is this video going to be a four hour long video? No, it's not. I'm going to break it up into a small little series of small little videos and each one I'll make a really interesting little story about and tell you something quite specific about the garden. It's not so much about adapting a whole library full of knowledge in your brain. It's about one simple little story about nature and about the cycle of life and how it works. And once you understand how it works, then everything takes on a totally different form and shape and understanding and you're actually able to find your way around it without too much help at all. So, so I kind of just want to give you a closer look at the weedy garden and what's going on here and how fruitful and abundant it is. How much I'm starting to feel like that gorilla in the forest that I used to dream about when I was a little kid. Because at any given moment, at any time of year, any time of day, I can come up here and fill a basket with food, whether it's vegetables or fruit. And that's actually a pretty nice feeling. When you're eating good, everything's working well. I'm standing right down the bottom of my garden now and this is when I'm going to start the story with just another little experiment that i got going on here, right? So I put a lot of energy and time and a lot of friends helped me build these swales, right? Because the swales are going to retain my water, going to retain my nutrients and hopefully make my trees healthier and happier. I planted some banana plants up on my swales and I fed them 
cow manure and chicken manure and compost and I watered them a lot and like really looked after them, gave them a lot of love. But this one here, all I did was put the spade in the ground and I opened up some soil and I then I put the banana pup in the ground and I pulled my spade out and I left it. And all I do is now is mow around it. So you can see how high this one is, it's like, oh, it's about the same height as me if I was putting up my arms compared to this one, see? Look how high this one is. See, it's even getting bananas on it. See, I'll have to bag those ones soon. So that's an interesting little experiment and I'll just see, see how many years it takes this one to, to start to make fruit. But um, this one's the first tree in my garden from this angle. And if we walk up here, this next bed here is actually a, a, a hugel culture. When I first started digging my swales, someone told me about that. So I chopped down, uh, what was it, a... Um, Might be a little bit of root zone going around this uh, acacia. Do you reckon I should chop it out? Um, you're probably going to kill it with kindness anyway. Well, you'll shorten its lifespan because the job will be done. These trees are the green manure of the landscape. So their job is to fertilise. That's actually the fertilising green manure of the landscape, acacia melanoxylon. So if, it's, if it gets too fertile, it's going to die because its job's done. This should be nice in a couple of years. There you go, you got one hugel culture right there. In hugel culture is where you put a lot of logs and sticks on the bottom of your garden bed and then put dirt on top. So I put all these logs on from a tree that I cut in the garden. Then we dug the swales and put all the dirt on top of that. <laughs> and the idea with hugel culture is that the all the logs and all the sticks and everything from the tree, they're going to decompose and that's going to feed the trees that are growing on the swales with all these logs rotting and it creates a really good uh, fungus environment, really good environment for the mycelium. And you can see my pecan tree is doing pretty well. The first year or two it was struggling actually, but the third year it's got a powering, it's probably growing, these, these are about probably a metre, a metre and a half. So that pecan tree is very, very happy there. And then we've got the avocado tree. You can see where I've chopped the top off it because I want the avocados to grow out the side here so I can harvest them. I don't want to have to climb up the tree to get my avocados. And that way I get all the fruit coming out the side so I can walk around it and, and take my fruit when it starts to fruit in a couple of years. Another thing that's really good to know is that this wine netting keeps the wallabies from ring barking your tree because wallabies, they love to eat little avocado shoot leaves and they love to eat avocado bark. I don't know why, they don't like the mango, they don't like all my other trees but avocado specifically the wallaby likes. So I made these little wine netting protectors, right? So it's pretty simple, wallaby comes along and he can't eat it. The wallabies have ring barked two of my avocado trees and killed two of them. So I outsmarted them and put on this mesh now so that protects the little avocado trees. So what happens when the sunlight creates a photosynthesis in the leaves, it mixes the carbon dioxide with the sunlight, those photon particles, turning the sunlight into sugar, it comes down through the bark and that sugar then gets spread out through the roots, which attracts the bacteria as we know, and those nutrients then come up through the trunk and feed the tree. So if there's no bark around and the wallabies have ring bark my avocado trees, the tree's not going to like that. So I put this little protective cover around all my avocado trees and I've got nine of them. So that stops that problem. And um, I collect the cow manure as well from the next door neighbour and I put on about probably half a wheelbarrow full of cow manure. We've got lots of cows next door so I collect the cow manure from next door and I also put about a wheelbarrow full of cow manure on each tree every year. And so there's all sorts of different mushrooms coming in to my swales from the outside. But the ones we can eat there up in the garden, I'll show you them later. So you can see wood chips and cow manure. And it's the happiest tree you'll ever see. Growing in the hugel culture bed. 
it's simple and if I don't have any support trees which I'll show you up in a second then I just put some wood chips um, about a wheelbarrow full half a wheelbarrow full of wood chips around each of my trees and that creates that nice fungi rich environment that's going to help your trees feed because all the mycelium that's like growing in these wood chips it goes out and it can collect all the nutrients it wants and brings them back to the plant Okay, that's it for this video. On the next video, I'm going to show you the results of the Ellen White method of planting a fruit tree. Okay, I've tried four times now to do it and I've killed my tree every time. So doing the Ellen White method, there's really important information I've got to tell you about that. It's doable, but I'll catch you on the next video and I'll tell you about the Ellen White method and what not to do. Okay, have a nice day everybody. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.